NSX for vSphere at the moment uses only VXLAN encapsulation. And you can select one of three flooding modes. You can use the traditional multicast mode where all the flooding is done through IP multicast. Or you can use a new unicast mode, which is even better than the unicast mode that I explained on the previous slide. Namely, for every layer 3 segment, NSX elects one of the hypervisors to act as the proxy flooding node. So the source node will replicate the packets and send them to other hypervisors on the same segment. And then it will send a copy of the packet to every proxy VTAP in every other segment. And those proxy VTAPs will then replicate the packets and send them within their segments. So it's emulated multicast, really, with first intra subnet source based flooding and then flooding to all other subnets. Then, of course, you can have the hybrid node. And in the hybrid mode, you use multicast locally, and then you don't rely on the data center transport infrastructure to provide IP multicast remotely, remotely meaning on different subnets, but send a unicast packet to the proxy VTAP in every other subnet, and then those proxy VTAPs yet again send local multicasts. So you use multicast to do flooding within every layer two segment, and you use unicast to get packets across segments because layer 3 infrastructure does not support multicast in your data center. Which mode should you select? If you are concerned with interoperability with third party equipment, then you should use the multicast mode. It's exactly what's specified in the IETF draft. But of course, it requires that you have the IP multicast support in the transport network in the data center IP fabric. If you decide to go with unicast mode, then you are totally independent from the transport infrastructure, but you do use more bandwidth and more CPU cycles on the source and proxy VTAPs. So don't use this in flooding intensive environments. And by the way, ARP is no longer flooded. Because NSX for vSphere has the layer 3 forwarding module in the kernel, that module also replies to all ARP requests, so ARP is not flooded. Things that are flooded may include IP multicast in a VXLAN segment, for example. Now, hybrid mode looks like a perfect solution, and it is if you're absolutely sure that. IP multicast is not enabled in the transport network. Because if you use hybrid mode with IP multicast in the transport network, you will get interesting replication effects and every hypervisor will get numerous copies of the same packet replicated first on NSX level and then on the physical multicast level. Why is there no multicast NSX for multi hypervisor with VXLAN, but you can use multicast with NSX for vSphere? Very simple, because the existing VXLAN module in vSphere already supports VXLAN with multicast, so throwing that out would not make sense. On the other hand, there are not that many people that are happy with deploying Alpi multicast in their network. So unicast VXLAN seems to be making more sense for most of the customers. And as you can see, every single overlay virtual networking vendor is moving toward unicast mode. Cisco now has unicast mode. VMware with NSX will have unicast mode. Hyper-V will have unicast mode, and so on. Does a service node support multiple vCenters? Service node is a concept that's only used in NSX for multiple hypervisors, and that deployment is not tied to vCenter. In NSX for vSphere deployment, you don't have the service nodes. With all this processing happening in the hypervisor, wouldn't a few multi-gigabit flows across VXLAN 
kick the heck out the CPUs, buses, and take away from compute workloads? Yes, but if you have flooded multi-gigabit flows in your data center, you have a different sort of problem anyway. So as long as you stay with unicast VM to VM communication, then obviously you will only load those hypervisors that actually have those VMs, and that's a performance hit that you simply have to take until we get TCP offload over VXLAN. If you load all the hypervisors with flooding, with, as you say, multi-gigabit flows, then we have a totally different type of problems. Next one, in MPLS environment, do I have to run multicast VPN to run NSX in multicast mode? Yet again, I would deploy NSX primarily in a single data center. So I would not run this across a service provider offered MPLS VPN network. That will cause you all sorts of interesting experiences. Why not have the controller handle all ARPs directly? After all, it knows all IP addresses. You don't want to involve the controller in the data plane because that limits the scalability. You want to handle all data plane forwarding primarily within the hypervisor switches. There are a few exceptions in NSX for vSphere. The controller is actually involved in ARP, but only when the initial ARP requests have to go out. After that, the ARP information is distributed to the layer 3 switches in the hypervisor so that as much processing as possible stays local. Yeah, that's right. On vSphere, there's an ARP cache that's on each vSphere host because the controller has an ARP information at the controller and distributes that across all the vSphere hosts. So if the vSphere host has an entry in its cache to answer an ARP, it will do that. If it doesn't have an entry, if there's a miss in that cache, then it will unicast query the controller, then the controller will unicast respond, and then the host will populate its cache with that new entry and then respond to the ARP. There are a number of similar questions, but I guess you answered them all. So the switches, the layer 3 forwarding modules in the ESX hypervisors, in the kernel of the ESX hypervisor, are implementing ARP caches that are used to answer the ARP queries, and as needed, the controller gets involved. If ARP is not flooded, then you can't use NSX for vSphere with Lisp, because Lisp enables switch use ARP for host detection. When you connect a logical layer 2 network with the external world, then if the ARP request has to go into the external world, it definitely will. On the other hand, what Lisp really can use if it relies on ARP are gratuitous ARPs, because you cannot expect hosts to create ARP requests on a regular basis. That timeout could be as long as the host wishes. If Lisp really uses ARP for VM mobility detection, then it has to rely on the gratuitous ARPs that are broadcasted from the VM, well, from the kernel, when it is moved. Yeah, I'll add to that in saying that if we're going to be using Lisp to provide optimal ingress routing into two data centers, and if your application, whatever it is, is in either data center one or data center two, let's not consider the scenario where we're stretching tiers of an application between two data centers. Your application is either going to be in data center number one or data center number two. What we can do, and we'll talk later in your slides, Ivan, about the NSX Edge, is the NSX Edge can do routing protocols with a switch that's capable of Lisp. And then that switch will be able to know about the IP subnets that it has at its site and can register that with Lisp. To find other virtual networking, data center, and cloud networking webinars, visit ipspace.net.